is Philip Ador, founder of NCLEX RN 45 Day Challenge. In this video, I'm going to be talking about burns. A burn is a damage that happens after something really like hot, like a fire or water or steam or even a hot object comes into contact with the skin. But burn injuries can also be caused by extreme cold, electricity, some chemicals like strong acids or radiations like from the suns or medical treatments. Ultimately, a burn causes damage and inflammations of the skin. The skin plays an important role in protecting the underlying muscles, bones, ligaments, and internal organs, forming a barrier to infections, pathogens, and preventing water loss from the body. Now, the skin is divided into three layers, the epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis. The epidermis forms the thin outermost layer of the, layer of the skin and is made up of several layers of keratinocyte, make and secrete glycolipids, which helps to prevent water from easily seeping in and out of the body. Underneath the epidermis is the thicker dermis layer that contains the nerve and blood vessels. But the dermis is divided into two layers, a thin papillary layer just below the epidermis and a deeper reticular layer. Papillary layers contain fibroblasts which produce a connective tissue proteins called collagens. The fibroblasts are arranged in the finger-like projections called papilla, each of which contains blood vessels and nerve endings. Nerve endings found in these layers sense pain and fine touch, which allows you to feel something like a feather or touching your arm. The reticular layer of the dermis is even thicker than the papillary layer. The collagen in the reticular layer is packed very tightly together, making it excellent tissue support. In addition, fibroblasts in the reticular layers to create elastins, which is a stretchy protein that gives skin its flexibility. The reticular layer also contains the skin's accessory structures like oil and sweat glands, hair, follicles, lymph lymphatic vessels, and nerve, and all of the blood vessels that serve the tissues. The type of nerve ending found here detects pressures or vibrations which allows you to feel someone's grabbing your arm. Finally, just below the reticular layer is the hypodermis. It's made up of fat, connective tissues that insulates and pads the deeper tissues and anchors the skin to the underlying muscles. When the skin is burned, it damages cells and the proteins within them. And the number of skin layers affected determine the burn degree. So in the first degree burns, also called superficial burns, the burn only affects the epidermis. In the second degree burns, the burn affects the epidermis and the dermis. If only the papillary layer is burned, it's considered a second degree superficial partial thickness burn. But if the burn reaches the deeper reticular layer, but doesn't extend through the entire layer that, that is considered the second degree deep partial thickness burn. In the third degree burn, also called the full thickness burns, the entire epidermis and the dermis are affected. And finally, four degree burns extend to the hypodermis. When the skin layer is affected, it means that the skin cannot function completely. And common complications are infections, especially from the Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and water loss through the damaged skin. As burn heals, the macrophages forms and move into the tissues to remove the dead cells. In fibroblast creates a new collagen to heal the damaged skin. The more extensive the area within the collagen, the more extensive, extensive the scar. So scars are common in second degree deep partial thickness burns and third and fourth degree burns. Symptoms of the burn depends on the degree of the burn. In the first degree, the affected area becomes red, dry, and painful. These areas also tend to blanch, turning white as blood flows restricted with compressions. Second degree superficial partial thickness burns can be red with clear blisters, wet as if they are weeping and are even more painful than the first degree burns but still blanch. A second degree deep partial thickness burn may vary in color from yellow or white to red. Blisters can be wet or dry. Because of the damage to the blood vessels and nerve endings, and burns of this degree may not be blanched. And there may be only pain due to pressures because of the nerve, 
of the nerve damage. A third degree burn can appear waxy, white, leathery, gray, or black and dry. Again, blanching doesn't occur and the pain may only feel like deep pressure. In other words, they can be relatively painless. In addition, the elastin damage causes the burn to be stiff or inelastic. Finally, four degree burns are charred, black, dry, have pain only from the deep pressures that can be painless from complete disruptions of the nerve endings and have patches of dead skin. Having said that, the margin of all burns often have lots of damage, nerve endings, and that can be painful. The diagnosis of a burn is often based on the burns appear in the amount of type of pain. But sometimes tissue biopsies are obtained to accurately determine which layers are affected. In adults, the severity of burns is calculated using the rule of nines. The rule of nines evaluates the several distinct sections of the body's total surface area for the presence and degree of burns. 11 of the sections each make up the 9% of the surface area. In the right head, right arm, the left arm, chest, abdomen, upper back, lower back, the front of the left leg, and the back of the left leg, and the same for the right leg. In final sections, the groin accounts for the missing 1% of the body's surface area. The treatment of a burn is determined by what caused the burn. The rule of nine caused the locations of the burns in the body. In general, immediate treatment is typically includes preventing further burning, like flushing the burn with cool but not ice, cold running water. After that, it's important to manage pain with medication. Minor burns like first and second degree superficial thickness burns can heal on their own over a fa past few days or weeks by keeping them blanched and clean with soap and water. Sometimes, locations to prevent drying or topical antibiotics can be used. If blisters from it's best to leave them alone because the intact skin helps to prevent infections. For more serious burns like electrical and chemical burns, the second or third degree burns, in sensitive areas like the face and the genitalia, hospitalizations, specialized burn center is often needed. In those situations, it's important to replenish lost fluids and electrolytes and prevent infections with antibiotics. Surgical procedures like skin grafting, excisions of dead skin, or amputations, especially in the third and fourth degree burns, may also be needed.